Hello then, folks. Welcome back to another Euros video with me, Lots Benji FM. And of course, once again, we are talking about England. It might not be coming home. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? Because pre-tournament, and, and I fell into the hype train that is the English... Uh, the English... It's coming home train, we'll call it. It's, it's, it's basically a big train that just says it's coming home on the side of it. And look, if you look at my prediction video, I've maybe said that England would come second. And the interesting thing is, I actually said they'd come runners up, right? And I think that probably leads some people to believe, and I think a lot of people fall into this, that England fans think that England are the best team. I actually thought that was more based on the run that I thought England would go through. I didn't necessarily think we'd win the group. I thought we'd maybe come second in the group, and that would give us this easier run towards the final. Um, and then our momentum would be able to carry us to that position. Could still happen, right? Let's not rule it out just yet. Um, but I think team-wise and squad-wise, like I, I am of the belief, and I've been saying this for about a year now since sort of before the last tournament that never actually happened that England are fifth sixth for me in terms of like quality teams in the tournament I'll probably put France ahead of them uh, I'd put Belgium ahead of them right now you'd probably put Portugal Germany just ahead of them as well and I think there are conversations to be had like around the likes of Italy right who I think are in a similar position Spain probably as well that have got similar squads in terms of like quality overall and depth and things like that and England are in that part of the conversation rather than the definitely going to win it conversation. Now, of course, we're here today to talk about England's team versus the Czech Republic. And the interesting thing now for Gareth Southgate is the criticism has well and truly begun. Got away with it in the first game. Got the win against Croatia. Played Kieran Trippier left back. And despite the fact we're all confused, when you win, it's amazing how quiet things get for that brief period, right? When you don't do what is expected of you, things change quite dramatically. Now, England have four points in the group. The chances of them qualifying, pretty good. Not certain, by any means. Lose to the Czech Republic and things could get ugly quickly um, based upon the other sides in other groups getting four points as well that are also in the third place spot. England should be fine. But again, it's... It's not impossible. And the team for this game is absolutely crucial. Now, I watched the Scotland game and then I watched it. And that, what I mean by that is I watched it as a fan, impassioned by the moment, shouting, get Jack Grealish on. And then I went away and I spent almost an entire morning looking through the stats and the data. And I watched the game again to figure out why England. And, I, and this, was, this was after I did my reaction video as well, right? So I looked at it again to figure out why why couldn't england break down scotland was it a harry kane problem was it that jack Grealish wasn't on the pitch no it wasn't either of those things really and my team for this game coming up is is partially is, there's two faults to it really one this this is the team that sort of needs to play in my opinion and then it's a team that should play and it's, it's a bit of a mix between the two actually and some positions don't really matter as we'll get to in a moment um let's talk through it though uh, as i reveal the team in goal no surprises he's always got this point jordan pickford uh no need to rotate a goalkeeper that's got no injury concern uh keep him in there he's looked good i had him as my player of the tournament in my predictions and so far it's looking pretty good so continue that please jordan uh so in goal once again jordan pickford had a great save against scotland do some more good saves now the back line this is where things get interesting and i touched upon this when previewing the scotland game a little bit and, and who i would have where Ben Chilwell should probably start a left back. I don't think Luke Shaw was particularly bad, but we'll talk about Harry Kane at some point, who Gareth Southgate has already said is going to start. Uh, Chilwell should come in. I think having him and Shaw both fit, both ready to go, it wouldn't surprise me if he puts Trippier back in there. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I hope he doesn't, because I think Ben Chilwell is good enough. I think he offers better width than Luke Shaw if I'm honest. I, I think they're, they're, they're both good defenders. Again, there's not much between them, but I think Luke Shaw should be in there. On the right-hand side, Carl Walker with Harry Maguire and John Stones in the centre. So that there, as you can see, is my four that I would select. Now, with Carl Walker, I don't really mind if it's him, Kieran Trippier, or Rhys James. I don't necessarily think it's that important. I think the way, the way that they play and the way that he's been told to play, whoever is the right back for the team, is absolutely important, right? What we had against Scotland, and I'm sure if you watched it, you saw this happen on a regular occasion, are both Luke Shaw and Rhys James moving forward with the ball, and then stopping and playing it inside or playing it towards one of the attacking midfielders, getting it back, playing it down the line, getting it back, playing it back to a central defender, playing it into a central midfielder, getting it back, forward, back. And at no point were balls going into Harry Kane. And and even the foot, like, so, so the, the start is simple as bring Jack Grealish on, he'll create chances for Harry Kane. No, 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 no. Harry Kane thrives from lots of different things at Tottenham. And I'm of the belief, whether you are or not, whether you think he's out of form or he's not fit enough, which based upon some of the data I've analysed, he's running no less than Robert Lewandowski, who has got a, got a goal. And now people are like, well, you know, he's Robert Lewandowski is pretty good. 
he's, he's running slightly less than Mason Mount, who I think we'd all agree has been pretty active. So this fitness issue, right, that, that seems to exist with Kane, to me, doesn't necessarily ring true when you look at some of the data. He, he's running, as, as I say, at similar levels to some of the best players. He's running more than someone like Karen Benzema, for example. Like, he's, he's, not, he's not doing anything that I wouldn't expect Harry Kane to do. When it comes to running deep and looking for the ball, even when he's doing that sometimes, he's not actually getting the ball. <laughs> so it's not a problem with him doing that. He's a creative player. And I know we're talking about defenders here, but we need for a fullback to occasionally play a ball into Harry Kane, who holds it up and controls it, or into a central midfielder, and then gets forward. And whether that's, again, whether that's Carl Walker or Luke Shaw or Ben Chilwell or Reese James or Kieran Trippier, I don't really care who it is, that player has to make that run into wider areas so that the creative players can do the business inside and to isolate defenders. We asked, we were too easy to defend against against Scotland. Scotland did a fantastic job. They were incredibly well, well organised, but we were too easy to defend against. And if you do that against the Scotland team or against the Czech Republic team or against any other side of any quality in this tournament, you will end up not scoring, panicking and going out. That's, that, that is the clearest way I feel like I can put that. And that is something that needs to be fixed quickly. And it's about philosophy. It's about design. And it's about team selection. And especially in the defensive areas, it doesn't matter so much. Going forward, it absolutely matters. And we'll come to that. Uh, Harry Maguire, I would put in over Tyrone Mings, who I don't think has done a thing wrong. But I think most of us would agree that Harry Maguire is a better defender than Tyrone Mings. He's probably more of an aerial threat than Tyrone Mings. He's probably got similar leadership qualities to Tyra Mings, I would say. And I think it's harsh on Mings, but I think most people would agree that a Harry Maguire John Stones back two is England's best two. And I think if you wait any longer to get him into the side, you risk him not being sharp. You play him at the wrong time when you're forced to play him rather than having the choice to play him. And then it looks regrettable that you didn't play him and, and, and chance it a little bit in the Czech Republic side. I think a Harry Maguire back line with Stones, as I say, Chilwell Walker, should be coping pretty well with, with with the Czech Republic anyway. England's defensive record in the last eight games, I think, have conceded one goal in the last eight games. So I wouldn't worry about that so much. And again, I think this comes to what, what is in front of England. The backline base has been pretty solid all tournament. We've, we've been pretty impenetrable. Pickford has, has, has had to make a couple of good saves. But other than that, they've not really been threatened. Now, what goes on in front? Jordan Henderson, Jude Bellingham. Uh, Henderson, for me, is in the same bracket as Harry Maguire. You have to play him now before you're forced to play him. He's not sharp enough, he's not fit enough, and he's not played for two weeks, despite having featured in one of the pre-tournament games, right? You, you've got to get him in now. Declan Rice and, and Calvin Phillips did fantastically against Croatia. Two of the best players on the pitch. They were absent against Scotland. Their inability to play forward balls... There was almost a fear that was that was put into them that I was not expecting. And from what I've heard, right, whether it's fans of Reese James or Declan Rice or Calvin Phillips or, or even Luke Shaw, right, teams fans of those clubs have all said that for their club sides, they're more than willing to play forward passes. They're more than willing to look for the creative ball, right? And for whatever reason, they weren't doing it in this game. When it comes to Rice, and there'll definitely be people that would argue this, it's my opinion that Jordan Henderson is a better player right now in, in his football life than Declan Rice. Will Declan Rice have a higher ceiling than Jordan Henderson? Will he, will he go on to be a better player? Maybe. Maybe he will. But right now, Jordan Henderson, for me, despite his lack of games towards the end of the season, is a better option. Don't forget, Declan Rice didn't play a huge amount towards the end of the season either. So I don't think, again, there's not a great deal between the two. Over on the other side, the game of the night was crying out for a player like Jude Bellingham to get on the ball, to play forward passes, to interchange between the creative midfielders in front of him. Um, and I don't know why he didn't come on. Frankly, I think that I think Southgate got things right against Croatia and he got things drastically wrong against Scotland because I think England did bet are better than that. Again, for all the credit you can give to Scotland, I think England are just better and can be better and I have players to make us better and I think Jude Bellingham falls into that. He's been terrific for Dortmund this season. He's played at that level. There's not a fear factor with Jude Bellingham. It's what impresses me most. You would not know he was 17 years of age. He, he comes into the side looking like a player that's played in Europe for five years and knows exactly what he is and how he plays. And that, to me, is so impressive. It's so exciting for the future, but we're here right now, and I think he's ready right now. If, they, if you're good enough, you're young enough, or whatever the phrase is. Something like that, right? Now, what comes in front of him? And again, this is it sort of ties into the Henderson and the Maguire conversation. And Gareth Southgate has spoken about Jaden Sancho. And I'm sure if you bring up the quote on, on screen right now, like, why on earth Jaden Sancho is being 
treated like he's a child, basically. Like he's Theo Walcott once he's been called up by Sven Goran Eriksson. Like J Jane Sancho has been fantastic for two seasons consistently for Borussia Dortmund, has played in Champions League games. And now we're in this weird world, for whatever reason, where Jane Sancho suddenly isn't ready to play for England. I, I can't, I can't understand, I can't understand any of that. There's no logic to me with, with Southgate saying that. It's like, it's like Jane Sancho is missing right now. He has to start. I would start him alongside Phil Foden and alongside Jack Grealish. Now, the player that's unfortunate there is Mason Mount. I want to talk about Mason Mount briefly, who I think has had a good tournament for England so far. It's probably been one of our better players, if I'm be, being completely honest. My issue with Mason Mount is he's taking, and again, I, I watched, I, I didn't notice this the first time I watched it. There was, there was moments where I thought, you're playing very high here, Mason. Mason Mount, Raheem Sterling, and Phil Foden were either too far apart from one another, or they were too close. And there was almost no in between. You had situations where Sterling and, and Mount were playing almost in the same position. If you go and look at the heat maps, and maybe we can bring them up on, sc on screen now, right? They're, they're overlapping each other to some to, to some degree. I don't know if Southgate has told them to have that fluidity, but it's not working. The, the bond and the connection between those, those players is not working. As for Sterling, I think Sterling had a poor game against Croatia. I didn't think he was that much better against Scotland. And I think his ball carrying abilities are limited when it gets to the final ball. There are moments where, where Sterling runs into a blind alley. And sometimes when he's in form, he's fantastic doing that, right? He creates space for others. He's got the ability to finish at, at times as well. And from Manchester City, we've seen him being part of a culture that is keeping the ball and making the most of it and waiting and being patient and waiting for those moments. When your fullbacks don't run forward, that's completely pointless because that natural width is completely gone from players cutting inside. Foden had that problem, as did Sterling. Um, I'd move Foden into the middle, I think creatively, Foden is probably our cleverest player on the ball. Um, you could, there's an argument for Grealish, there's an argument for Kane in that as well. And, and there's arguably a, a moment for someone like Sancho as well, who I think equally, right, that Sancho, Foden, Grealish combination, Grealish from the left-hand side, who came on against Scotland on the left-hand side and to sort of hugged the left-hand side, would have wanted him to be able to drive in a little bit more. The reason I, th I feel like, I, I, mean, I spoke about it before, the three in front, Sancho, Grealish, Foden, they're also willing to bring others into play. And that's what I like about the likes of Jaden Sancho. Great on the ball, can take on a man, can find the pass, can keep it moving. Putting Foden in the middle means you're not having him to play that Sancho role. I, I would I would absolutely still play Phil Foden. Again, I think he's got that little bit more guard, that little bit more creativity than Mason Mount. You could only play Mount in a two, like in, in the deeper midfield role, but I, I think you take him out for this game. He's had two good games where he's worked hard, he's created, he hustles, he bustles. I'm hoping with the likes of Henderson in there, you don't need to have him do that quite so much and you can let those creative players be creative. I just want other players being brought into the game, whether that be fullbacks who are pushing forward and creating problems and maybe you have Henderson sit a little deeper. Maybe you keep Rice in and you have Rice just sit a little deeper and allow the other players to create in front of him. Maybe Bellingham is slightly more creative than Calvin Phillips. So again, I think he's had a good tournament. Like I don't think he's to blame for this. I think there is a combination of things happening in front of him that are not gelling. And that then brings us to Harry Kane. What is the what is the matter with Harry Kane? Well, I think I know the answer. When you see Harry Kane play for Tottenham Hotspur, the, the first thought in the Tottenham Hotspur players' minds, right, whether that be Son or Deli Ali or Gareth Bale this season or any of the fullbacks, is where is he? How do we get him involved? How do I get him the ball? There is this acceptance, acceptance at Tottenham Hotspur that I know finished seventh, that I know had a poor season, and yet I'm, I'm sure someone can make an argument to say that the reason they finished seventh is because they are putting too much emphasis on Harry Kane. Regardless of whether that's true or not, he's got X amount of goals, X amount of assists, and he topped the charts in both this season. And for that, to not utilise that, to not have that be a part of our side, and I think most people would agree that this England team is probably slightly better than the Tottenham side in, in the scope of like where they both sit in the world of football. If you don't use him properly, you might as well not play him. And that, that's where I am with Harry Kane right now. You have to involve him in everything and you also have to have runners that are making what he's doing deeper effective now sterling initially was the idea for that you have sterling fill the spaces that are left by harry kane and maybe that's something southgate will continue with phil foden that will become your job if you were to play behind harry kane in the system that i'm creating and jack Grealish, that will be your job jane sancho that will be your job that if one of you is creating the other two are looking for the space. And of course, Kane can play high up and he can sit there. But there's a reason Harry Kane has so many assists. He's very good on the ball. 
Like, you, you've got to get him involved more and play him into form. If we're not going to do that, play Calvert-Lewin. Stop. Let's not waste our time. If we don't want a striker like Harry Kane to play in this England lineup, just... now and Southgate's brought Kane off twice because of, he looks ineffective again I've, I, I focused very much on when I, on my second watch I watched Harry Kane and what Kane does is he sits up front on his own for ages people don't believe he's doing this sits up front on his own for ages he watches the ball get knocked around this this situation again central midfielder full back forward to an attacking player back center back across the other way it's too slow way too slow by the way that's something that England have to improve on tempo was abysmal against Scotland and then at some point, Kane goes, well, they're not just, they're not playing balls to me. The amount of times Rice or Phillips wouldn't necessarily play that vertical ball towards Harry Kane. So at some point, like any striker would, like I saw Kylian Mbappe do for France this week, like I've seen Ronaldo do for Portugal this week, <laughs> two losing sides, maybe that's part of the problem. But, but you, get my, you, get, you get my gist, right? Some of the best players in the world are, are having to do this to, to find themselves involved. Kane will come short, get the ball, play it, pass it, bring up Kane's stats. Like, look, this is what he did against Scotland. Wasn't involved. Didn't do anything. Like, and for Tottenham, his stats are double that. What he's, his output is double that. So you have to find a way to get the best out of him. And to me, you've got to make him the main man. And if it fails, you fail trying to make Harry Kane the main man. The best argument against this, you've had how long? You've had two warm-up games. You've had two group games. And now this is the time we're deciding... Let's put all our eggs in the Harry Kane basket. It's too late. Like, it's too late. And it, and it's frustrating to me that wasn't originally the plan. Um, that is my 11 for this game coming up. Whether he'll play it or not, I don't think so. I think Trippier could definitely come back in either, on either flank. Um, I don't necessarily think he'll risk both Maguire and Henderson. So I could see maybe a Rice-Bellingham combination start or something of that nature. Um, I don't necessarily think Sancho will start. I think he might go with Sterling again. But the rotation this tournament would be important. These guys that have started both of the first two games, it's time for them to drop out. I think the side that I'm picking there, any side that Southgate picks really, because I think our depth is that good, should be beating the Czech Republic, who so far have had a, a very good tournament, like dispatched of Scotland quite comfortably, got a great point against Croatia. Um, I think Southgate has to gamble a little bit with what's to come in mind and if he doesn't and England fail to beat the Czech Republic I know there's permutations to having an easier run in the tournament but if you don't beat the Czech Republic you don't build the momentum now you don't get the trust of the country back they'll be coming for his head and I don't want that because I think what Southgate has done with England doesn't get enough recognition it doesn't get enough credit and he's in danger of undoing that if we don't see improvement now his job is to get out of the group and I understand that but I think if you want to set a marker for the tournament and you want to be a man that could be seen to lead, lead England beyond this tournament, you've got to start making some big decisions. Otherwise, it's going to be too late for everybody. There we are then. Cheery, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's hope we win. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing I'm looking forward to. Most. Let's hope we win. I'm looking forward to the game. If you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the analysis, please do drop a like on it. Let's say for a thousand of you. I know there's over a thousand of you watching, so let's go for a thousand likes. Uh, and if you want to see some more, make sure you subscribe. Of course, I'll be doing my reaction straight after the game against the Czech Republic. I hope it's a happy one. And I hope we see a similar team to the one that I have, have predicted, selected. Right, we love with care. If you want to spend your next time, I'll see you again very, very soon. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.